Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So we're once again taking a look at the Yuzhan Vong War and specifically the first days of the invasion. I find this time period very, very interesting as the New Republic and the galaxy were being attacked by an enemy that they figured couldn't possibly exist. They thought entry into the galaxy was impossible because of the great hyperspace barrier. The Yuzhan Vong also had very strange and new technology that the galaxy was no way prepared for. Vong Coral Skippers, their basic starfighters, used miniaturized black holes to not only absorb incoming blaster fire, but actually yank the shields off enemy ships. At Cern Padal, the Yuzhan Vong also used a larger version of a Dovin Basil to pull the planet's moon to the surface in what was known as the Devastating Yogan's Core Technique. This resulted in the death of all remaining on the planet, including, most famously, Chewbacca himself. Another really interesting element of the Yuzhan Vong invasion was also the misdirection. The Yuzhan Vong didn't simply attack the galaxy. Rather, they sent in advanced agents, including No Manor, and later even an advanced fleet that Praetoriate Vong in an effort to soften up the galaxy. By the way, before I continue, if this sounds interesting to you, and it should, this is awesome EU lore, we are currently going through the entire New Jedi Order, the Yuzhan Vong book series, on my podcast Tapgaf Transmissions. It's basically a book club. You can read along for a new book every couple of weeks, or you can just listen. A couple of Thursdays ago, we did Vector Prime, book one. This coming Thursday, we're doing Dark Tide 1, book two. It's definitely not too late to jump in. The episode are very digestible. I'll link down below. But anyway, Vector Prime really focuses on two Yuzhan Vong agents which were situated in the galaxy before the Vong world ships began arriving. One was No Manor, the other was Yeoman Kar. Both of these individuals played a role in setting the galaxy up for the Yuzhan Vong invasion, both in some really disturbing ways. So let's talk about Yeoman Kar first because he is, well, the shorter lived of the two characters. Yeoman Kar infiltrated what was known as the Exgal Society. I talked about them in a recent video, but the Exgal Society's main purpose was to scan beyond the galactic rim for any evidence of life or information or whatever they could find, basically. Yomakar disguised himself as human through a fairly disturbing creature known as an Ooglith Masker. All Yuzhan Vong use organic technology, and the Masker essentially inserted itself into your skin, including over your face, making you look like a human or any other creature, really. Additionally, Yomankar used another small biotic known as a teasel worm, which burrowed into his ear and translated basic so that he could understand when people were talking to him. Kar spent several months among the Exgal scientists on the planet Belkadan, where there was a small outpost. He had two roles here. For one, he was using the equipment to observe extragalactic space so that he could see the fleet approaching Vector Prime, their entry point into the galaxy, and two, once the fleet was spotted, he was to eliminate everyone on Belkadan so that the rest of the galaxy would not be notified and also prepare the planet for further use. Kar utilized a disturbing and incredibly dangerous creature known as a Dweebit. Upon arriving at the planet, Kar released several of these small beetles, which began dominating the Belkadan ecosystem. The Vong had several ways to destroy or at least eliminate all hostile life on planets, and the Dweebits were one. The moment where the the fleets of the Praetoriate Vong are discovered is an interesting one in Vector Prime. As we discussed on the podcast, the novel at that point almost turns into a horror story. We first see a group of scientists who are leaving the planet notice a massive storm. It seems to be approaching quite rapidly the Exgal base. They try to communicate with the surface, but Kar has destroyed all equipment planet side. Unfortunately, they can't turn around, and we see from Kar's perspective, as without a masker now in his disfigured Yuzhan Vong form, he begins begins assassinating quite brutally the members of the Exgal team. In the meantime, some of the survivors are trying to figure out what's going on, they try to scout out the storm, and they discover that something very strange is going on. The storm, in fact, is made up of fumes, which almost immediately chokes and kills anyone who goes within it. We see the scientists trying to run back to the Excal station. They're basically picked off one by one from the storm as they run out of oxygen. And in the end, it's revealed that it's not volcanic activity or some weird natural phenomenon on the planet. Rather, it's the bugs, the dweebits introduced by Kar, which have been reproducing and which are now, through some means, excreting these toxic fumes. Eventually, the fumes will be such that they'll cover the entire planet. Kar will only survive through the use of Yuzhan Vong 
technology, but essentially the planet is doomed. Not just to humans, but also most natural life as well. Mara Jade and Luke would travel to Belkadan investigating what would happen, and they would end up fighting and killing the Rogue Vong agent, but there would be nothing they could do to save the planet. Luke and Jason would return about a month later and would find Belkadan serving as a ship womb for Yuzhan Vong vessels. Another, more relevant agent of the early Yuzhan Vong attack was Gnome Anor. Gnome Anor had actually been within the galaxy for perhaps decades, and his actions were arguably more elegant and and also destructive than Yeoman Carr. Instead of trying to fade into the background as Carr did, Nomanor instead sought to find positions of power and use them to stoke rivalries between existing nations or planets. The most famous example of this would be Osarian and Ramamul. On Ramamul, Nor essentially worked his way into a leadership position where he stoked existing tensions between the two planets and at every turn made sure that the War continued to escalate. The two planets weren't very advanced technologically, but they had an orbit which, for a short period of time, brought them close together. During one of these periods, Nomanor launched a nuclear strike against Osarian, which then retaliated against Ramamul, causing full fledged nuclear war. Nomanor was presumed dead when a nuclear laden shuttle launched a suicide attack against the mediator, a powerful New Republic capital ship, but of course, he managed to escape. Nomanor was also known for secretly infecting many within the New Republic with a mysterious illness which had almost a 100% fatality rate. This was in fact the Yuzhan Vong Biotic, the Coom Spore, funny name I know, which itself seemed to be perhaps a cousin or relative at least of the Dweebit. As I said, everyone infected with the Coom Spore died and usually died pretty quickly, with the one exception of Mara Jade who used the Force to hold off its effects. After leaving Rum Mamul and Osarian, Nomanor would move on to the rest of the galaxy to look for weak points which he could strike in order to weaken and soften up the galaxy for a potential Yuzhan Vong invasion. And how well did that work? What happened to Nomanor? Did he survive? Did he ascend to the top position within Yuzhan Vong leadership? Did the Yuzhan Vong eventually lose the war? How did the New Republic strike back? Well, again, make sure you join us for our podcast, Tap Cap Transmissions. We're going to be covering this book series for like the next year. I'm also going to be doing videos like this probably once every couple of weeks, maybe more often if you guys enjoy it. But that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And if you have any video ideas you'd like to see me make, also let me know those. Till next time, guys, have a good one. Be safe and may the force be with you.